So this is the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God, a ancient Hindu text. I don't know exactly when it was written because I don't, I'm not sure anybody really knows. Um, I've heard about 300 AD, so let's just say that this is about 2,000 years old. It's an ancient text from a from the great uh, civilization of India, the Hindu civilization of India. Um, and this is part of a part of their sacred, uh, the sacred uh, texts of Hinduism. And um, yeah, so this is I give you the whole book, but you can just start with chapter one, the sorrow of Arjuna. Uh, so why don't we see if we can get there? There's a lot of good introductory material if you're interested. Just gave you the whole thing here, but um, it may be a little confusing as we get started. Uh, Dhritarashtra, uh, the seer, uh, Sanjaya. Um, the, the setup is a little bit complicated because there's a war going on, or there's a war about to start, or a battle about to start, and um, Dhritarashtra, who's on the opposite side of Arjuna, wants to see what's going on. So he uses his, his holy man, his seer, to to tell the story of what's going on. Um, and he tells the story of Arjuna and Krishna. Uh, the setup is that Arjuna is the great warrior on one side. Um, this is a, a, a civil war, a dynastic struggle for the throne of this region of ancient India. And Arjuna is one of the princes and the greatest warrior of one side. And uh, he's fighting from a chariot, and his charioteer is an incarnation of the god Krishna. So his per this person standing next to him in the chariot is actually a god. So at least that's my understanding. His friend and charioteer and god Krishna. And you can see what happens there, right? That Arjuna wants to see before the battle starts, he, he has... Krishna drive the chariot between the armies so he can see the other side and and what he sees are people that he knows um, and he's struck you know he's he's struck he, he's horrified at the thought of of killing them of hurting them because he, he many of them he knows right, as he says and he goes through all sorts of reasons for not fighting. And in the first chapter or the first teaching, um, he decides he's not going to fight. Uh, and then at the very end of this, the first teaching, he says, having spoken thus, Arjuna threw aside his arrows and his bow. In the midst of the battlefield, he sat down in the seat of the chariot and his heart was overcome with sorrow. That is, he said, hey, he's not going to do it. He's not going to kill too much love, too much regret. That in itself is just really interesting. You know, a warrior overcome with his sense of humanity, his sense of pity and love and sympathy, and refusing to engage in violence because he just thinks it's wrong. That in itself is interesting. But what's really interesting is how... Uh, Krishna, Sri Krishna, just Krishna, the God, how he responds. You know, I'm not going to say a word about how he responds. That's for you, um, and that's for you to respond to. Uh, but suffice it to say that when I first read it, I was incredibly surprised at how Krishna responds to Arjuna's problem. And the rest of the book really is Krishna explaining that answer. And uh, far be it from me to think about that. But the whole book is, is his, his response and a very complicated response to what he says to Arjuna. And that's for you to discover for yourself.